Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Man 3, Die Dark Man Die, Movie Thoughts. I'm just gonna start with the very first scene. I quite liked the way Dark Man actually uses his ability to not feel pain. Yeah, at all. I'm not sure that happened at all in the first two movies and yeah, he climbs the electric fence, and of course the guys can't follow him. I love that one of them tries. To be fair, he didn't know about Darkman, but if I had seen this electrical stuff coming out of... I mean, can't they see that? Is that just for the, the sake of the audience? I, I wouldn't have followed after seeing stuff like that. And of course they, again, do the thing of... Ah, you're face to face with yourself because it's Darkman and he's using a mask and yeah. Actually for a second, I hadn't watched this since yeah, age twelve when I watched the entire trilogy for the first time. So I had forgotten what exactly happened in that first scene. I thought that he had sort of switched places so that the guy walking up to grab the money was the actual guy. And then he pretends to wake up, and it's gonna be like, oh, that dude's Dark Man, and then they shoot him. But instead, it's that they don't know about Dark Man yet, which again confirms that he really hasn't taken to vigilantism. <laughs> you know, this dude seriously needs an overbearing uncle who can, you know, tell him about how, you know, with great power. Seriously. Yeah. It's, he's, he's literally just there at the beginning to steal money so that he can buy research stuff, research equipment. <laughs> Not quite Robin Hood, I, I guess. I, I do like that he at least chooses a criminal to steal from. I like how, I, I really like the entire thing with the, the scientist, the, the, I don't remember her character name, Dar Darlan Fluigl, I'm just gonna go by Dar, Darl, from here on out her name is Darl. The twist with Dr. Darl, you know, at, at first you don't really know what's going on. You, you basically trust her and you think that it's, that, you know, I don't know, maybe you don't really believe that it's going to work out with the liquid skin, but you don't know exactly what's going to happen. And then he has that nightmare and she comes back, oh, I have this horrible nightmare. But the truth is that it wasn't a nightmare. This is a great bit. And that basically makes it okay that they did the fake out dream sequence earlier as much as that is justifiably hated and to, yeah just her entire character with uh, I I don't think I'm gonna earn enough money by this underground stuff I am gonna sell this to the world, you know, medical, what was it, medical exports or something like that, and because that's, that's how you make more money, and at times she almost seems like the kind of, the, the negative side to science, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I, I love science, but I do realize that science itself doesn't really have a sense of morals. You need science and ethics. You need to be ethical about science because pure science, pure objectivity doesn't say everyone needs to be treated right. It actually kind of more says to be absolutely 
absolutely sure what the effects of this thing is, I should probably get a lot more to test it on. And, yeah, and that's at times what she really kind of seems like. She's, she's like, well, I'll need to test it, you know, and she, she's talking about, oh, there might be psychological after effects. And in amongst this, she's also this really evil, I, I love her maniacal laugh. I, did it only happen in the nightmare? That's really too bad, because she's, no, it happened when she's like, if you're not a nice little, uh, what was it, a good boy, you're gonna feel from this, and she laughs. And she, just, she has a really great evil laugh. It's, it's so over the top. Really good stuff. And just the idea of bringing that character back, because <laughs> thanks to the sick, twisted mind of Sam Raimi, that character in the first movie did sound a little out there. And I'm not sure she was really supposed to. I think it's basically just the world that he created. There, there are characters who... When watching the first movie, I don't really get the sense of that that character was really, you know, a horrible person. It was just kind of, yeah, this this twisted depiction of a, a character that, that's Sam Raimi. That's a Sam Raimi character. And, but, but bringing her back and expanding on it with her wanting to capitalize on this. I thought that was a really great idea. And it's, it's one of those things where it's sort of a retcon, but I feel like it works. I don't feel like it ruins the character. And it's probably because they picked a pretty... There wasn't much of a character to ruin. And just the, to have this coupling of Rooker and then this mad scientist. And they're, of course, they're, they're having an affair as well. And he really sucks at hiding affairs. It, it, if he had just had, like, a guard posted to send advance notice or to keep her back a little bit, you know, I, I don't... No wonder she found out about all the previous affairs. By the way, I had not watched that woman in anything, the, the wife character, but I did briefly look her up. She's in, like, Voyager, Star Trek Voyager, as, like, a major character. I, I've watched, like, one or two episodes of that show. Yeah, I, she's one of the better actors in this. So I, I can understand why she was on that show for so long. And the, I mean, she has to make lines in this work that you really do not want to have to be handed. She has s several of these really expository lines of dialogue. She, she walks in, and it's the first time we even know about her knowing of the affairs, and there having been any other affairs, and she has to deliver this tirade about you said that there would be no more affairs, and I was a big enough fool to believe you, and this whole, they're trying to jam-pack all this, because it's a tightly paced movie, so they're trying to jam all this information into as little time as possible, and that means exposition, and she has several of those shows. Usually you won't even let Jenny touch the piano, and now you're suddenly doing duets with her, and all this, yeah, the, by the way, the, the, th mentioning Jenny reminds me of the play, talk about on the partially burnt off nose there, man, you even have Beauty and the Beast performed in the movie just to really hammer it home, this is what we're doing here, this is the, this, See how it's similar? I really did not at all get why Peyton went 
to the play. At first I wasn't entirely sure if it was actually him or if it was maybe the real Roker. Actually, I suppose it is because he just cares and wanted to spend more time with her. Actually, yeah, you know what, scratch that. I buy that completely. That is actually kind of sweet. Speaking of kind of sweet, they really went out of the way, their way to cute up the, the the daughter Jenny. Just the the laughing and the smiling and the whole just yeah, that was to be fair the, the kid's not too bad. I really like how Darkman basically dresses up as Rooker to check out the, the safe because he's expecting the disc to be there. And the the daughter comes up and she, I, I love the thing of can I please get some was it hot cocoa or something like that? And it just I don't know. Maybe it's not actually the middle of the night, but it's so dark outside. It looks like the scene is taking place in the middle of the night. I'm like, kid, are you seriously that spoiled? Do you... Wow. That... <laughs> anyway, he... And, and it's like, okay, well, sure, but then daddy has to go. Daddy's very busy, and then surprise! And the zoom in on or the, or the camera moves in close on his face, and it's like... Oh man, that is just that sucks, and it's really great the way this he's out on mission and suddenly it goes completely wrong. He had not expected that at all, and the I love how he makes that work for him with the DA comes up and he he offers to strike a deal. And it's and and that kind of alienates these other criminals. I do kind of wish that that had been like a, a bigger deal in the overall. That's kind of one of the things that I feel like nothing really came of that. It's not like he was really short on guys in the last scene. Excuse me, like really noticeably. And the I like how Darkman is actually captured so early on, and he's actually captured twice. At first, he's like tricked into it, and then the second time, they actually physically capture him, kind of making that first escape a little unnecessary. They wanted an action scene there, and I gotta admit, it's a quite entertaining one. In spite of that one bit where that one goon calls Darkman a french fry, seriously, you think that's the best you can come up with? I don't know, I'd go with like roast beef or something, so it's something that actually fits in the... French fry? Really? I guess the guy just doesn't eat out much and he's forgotten what those look like. Anyway, uh, the I, I, and I like the thing about how she promises to make him be able to feel again. And she, of course, uses that thing of, that, that excuse of, really, I, I wouldn't think you'd be able to feel just yet. And because obviously he can't feel yet. And in case he was wondering, because she didn't actually fix him. And then it's the, you know, oh, I did reattach the nerve to this. Bzzz. That's that's really great. And the whole, just everything with that thing. The zapper, I'm gonna, the shock, the shocker, actually. That's what it's called. In my world, it is. I love everything about it. I love that she cuts him open just so they could have a leash on him, and the and and he finds that thing 
the, the bolt cutter, you do gotta wonder why they didn't bother to make sure that there wasn't any sharp objects that he could use like that. I mean, at, at first, they, I guess they don't know how strong he is since they, they don't do a good enough job of locking him up, or they just kind of figure, yeah, again, they needed an action scene, hence the person with the shopper remote is not close enough by, so, you know, we can have some stuff blow up and he can hop from one barrel to another. That kind of looked like an early 90s video game or something. Maybe they were trying for that. Maybe they were, like, you know, going to see, we can have a game where Darkman jumps from one barrel to another. Think about it. And the... Anyway, yeah, he, he gets captured again, gets thrown out there, gets the bolt cutter, opens the wound, which is already really nasty looking, already in the nightmare sequence where she laughs maniacally, and it's cut open, that's already really nasty looking, and then he cuts the scar open and gets the thing out. And the, the that hillbilly-ish goon comes up and Okay, maybe you, I, what was it? I can't beat you, but you can't beat this, or something like that. And he uses the shocker remote, and then Darkman, it's, it's like on the ground in front of them. And then Darkman picks it up, and what was the line? Got an eyeful, or something like that. Wow. And he just saps the dude's brains out. It's, that's really good. And and they come later and the face is like smoking and put him out. So that's great. It's that's as gruesome as it really should be. That's something that felt like it could have happened in the first movie. The I quite like the thing with the the, the restaurant scene, where you think that she's going to die, the Voyager wife. We think Voyager wife is going to bite it, and then the guy shoots Dr. Darrell instead. That's really great, very unexpected. And, and then he's all like, oh, but I'm a new man, I, I did it for you, I killed that person. And, He's really not very good at this whole kind of... It's, it works for the movie, basically, but shouldn't they have tried to do that somewhere where it wouldn't be seen? They already have the DA on uh, their case. I, I love how police, cli p cop movie cliche, the, the DA is. It busts into the home. Do you have a warrant? Yeah, here you go. I'm gonna come down on all your asses. It's just wow. The dude could just not be anymore. You know, the the only thing missing is him talking about how the mayor's been all up his ass the entire week, and you know, someone has to hand in their badge. Something. That's that's the only thing missing. But but yeah, it seems like they might have wanted to try to lure her away from there, or something like that, but I don't know. I suppose in their defense, she is a scientist, maybe she would have figured it out if she was very obviously being taken away. Although, they do have, there, there are several guys in their arms, so it seems like they should have been able, yeah, actually, it still doesn't completely make sense. It's basically just for the theatricality of it. I really did not understand where the Rooker thing... Like I said in the review, he basically has no personality, except for the fanaticism about physical strength. I love the thing with, if you want to prove something, you you do it with physicality. You know, a gun doesn't make you strong. Now let me fire this gun to get their attention. Yeah. So you, you're making a point using a gun, right after you've said that a gun doesn't make a point. That's, that's fantastic. I, I I really have to wonder if the writer even considered that little point there. And anyway, the 
Yeah, yeah, the... Ah, crap, where was I? Yeah, yeah, the Rooker's motivation in those last several scenes of, like, suddenly he does want to be with her and the kid, and it's like, you don't even really understand why they're together at all. He seems like the kind of guy who'd prefer to just have mistresses, maybe even, like, sex workers around or something, um, to make him seem more respectable. Maybe they did once care for each other, I don't know. And the... But, but yeah, that seems to be sort of his thing for the last... It, it makes him menacing. I love when she knocks down all that stuff. <laughs> I guess that's the divorce then. And he gets like crushed, or, or we think he does, and then he just gets up. Does Darkman have spe special healing powers now? I didn't really think he did, but apparently this movie thinks he did. Yeah. It does. And he gets up and he's like bloody, blood on his face. Ah, but I'm a new man. I'm, you know, like reborn kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. The... I love the scene where Darkman tries to explain, try, tries to get Voyager wife away from the, f away from Rooker, and he like, I'm sort of, and like at first he's sort of sounding sane. Ah, don't you love alliteration? And then he goes into like, no, I was, I was in your house. And you didn't know it, and I have liquid skin, and I'm wear I wear masks, and it's just wow. And and then you stop and actually think, yeah, there's no way he can make this sound rational. So yeah, I guess points for trying at least. And and the the, the car drives away, and he just keeps standing there. You have to get away from him. You have to get away from Peter, and it's like. I still have lines of dialogue. Obviously, you can't hear me because you're in a car. The windows are closed, and the, there's the sound of the engine. You're far away already, but I still have lines, and I'm gonna shout dramatically. The I thought the ending was quite good. I like the somber note that it ends on, where they there's literally like a few I don't know couple of feet between them maybe, and she's just asked him to turn around so she can see the man who saved her, her daughter, and it, it it does have that kind of effect of, um, even if he hadn't said it in the narration, they're still far apart, you still get that sense, it's still, he can't quite be close to someone, he, or he at least can't do so for a in in the long run or at least not after that short amount of time spent together. I also really love that he actually gives up his chance to get his face back, possibly the last chance excuse me for Jenny's face sake. Excuse me, that's a quite good you know and, and that makes him be a more, I mean, okay, so he is now doing vigilantism, which I still think he should. He is actually trying to help people, and that's also, that also comes across in that scene of, actually, I suppose this is the closest in the trilogy he comes to really being a vigilante, a, a, an anti-hero who isn't just out to get revenge. He also stops the... What do you call that? De-limbing? Yeah, li torn limb from limbing of the DA, which he does by running into him and pushing him aside and saying, get him away. It kind of seems like they basically could have done that without his help, but 
well, he, it shows that he's making that choice at least. And Rooker's speech about when you want to make a point, you use physical strength, not a gun, proves slightly misguided when these wasn't there like all four guys stopped by a gun? In fact, wasn't it just like one gun? I think it was just one cop with a gun. And it was. I, I do like how at first they were basically trying to restrain them because it's. It, there's a crowd there. You don't want to ex accidentally fire into. You know, I mean. Or at least back then, cops weren't quite as trigger happy. And so, you, or at least, you know, I don't know, maybe if you gave them mace, and those were protesters, I don't know, anyway, at first it's, they're, they're trying to just restrain these guys, because they don't know that it's, you know, if, if it was someone of normal strength, then you can restrain them, you just get in the right position, you use the, you use that police training to get the the job done, and it kept not working because these guys were too strong. So even if you are in that right position, if you seem to have power over that other guy, they can still throw you away. You know. I also liked how it used that aspect of Dark Man to to actually go and 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 that's of course it's it's a comic book trope. The the villain trying to use the hero's power against him, or infuse his goons with that same power, stuff like that. And it works out quite well, I think. I do think that the various displays of this super strength, they tend to be underwhelming, they, they don't really prove that they have super strength. Basically, the guys get super strength and they're arm wrestling. Because if you don't have super strength, you don't arm wrestle, obviously. It, it, maybe if it had been like one big muscly dude who hadn't taken the formula, and then one scrawny one who had taken the formula, and the scrawny one actually really easily wins, something like that, but yeah. Or if they like picked up heavy things. C couldn't you have just made like foam rubber? I well, mean, not quite rubber, but something like like supporting beams, and they just pick those up and or just, you know move them with ease or something like that. Actually, I suppose we don't even know completely what the extent of his super strength is. Though the opening narrations, I think, say like ten, the, the strength of ten men. But, but yeah, it's something like that. And there at the end we have just a straight up physical fight between Rooker and Darkman. And again, that doesn't really prove that he has super strength. You don't really need super strength to take on... If, if it also imbued them with extra tolerance for physical, like, punishment, like, they could take a lot of blows. I mean, Dark Man doesn't feel pain, and it's not like, Rooker doesn't, I mean, it doesn't actually make them not feel pain, does it? It was just like the DNA or something. It was a little too sciencey for my taste. I, I didn't completely understand what it was Dr. Darrell was doing to them, but, yeah. And I, I like the... The, the thing with the disc, once Darkman loses it, it's sort of what he's, for a lot of the movie, focused on getting back. It gives him a real goal, and you know, he thinks it's in the, in the safe, but no. And then at the end, Rooker had it on him, and he fires, he, he shoots it, because you don't make a point with a gun. Okay, I'll drop that one. The I did like when Rooker was tricked into you know right before the DA is attacked. 
Roku meets some person, and that person tells him, you know, the, the DA wants to meet with you, and it turns out to be Darkman, and he's asking for the disc back. And, yeah, it's, I, I like the surprise of it, although I suppose we really should have seen it coming. But, why exactly does Rooker follow him? Why doesn't he just say, no, I'm, I changed my mind, I don't want to do the deal? Is, is something gonna... I don't know, the, the only thing I can really come up with is that he's worried that the DA won't show until he's met with him, and he just wants to do the attack on him. sacrificing Darkman's face to get, to, to save Jenny's face. One thing that I also want to mention is obviously it is him choosing to keep someone else from experiencing some of the same, what do you call it? fate as he has. He he doesn't want her to go through her life with severe burns and that's a, a great kind of... Maybe at the end of this movie he actually will become a vigilante. Maybe that's why they stopped making movies because he became a vigilante and they just refused to show that in one of the films. It has this sort of, he, he's taking, yeah, he's, he's doing something to make sure that what happened to him doesn't happen to someone else, to, you know, in, in a manner of speaking. Rooker's demise was nice and gruesome, even if we didn't really see or even hear anything of it. I do think the fight was over too soon, and it also just, you know, again, the the super strength thing really should have made a bigger difference in some way, but I don't know, I don't really see that much, I, I think more Darkman's strength is his guerrilla tactics and his, his stealth, I don't really view it as it being that big of a deal that he has the super strength. I don't see, I, I can't really point to very many places, or at least only the sort of the rage outs that he gets, sort of. And, and that happens in this movie too as well, you know, when he breaks out of the, what was it, chains, something like that. I suppose that covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.